जननी शारदा देवी रामकृष्ण जगद्गु पादपद्मे तयो श्रुवा प्रणमा मुहुर्मुहु Yesterday, we were contemplating on how Ram Krishna would have meditated upon as a practical happening in our own lives. How do we begin our meditation? How do we progress in spiritual life? How do we, how do we progress in meditation towards the reality how do we get the vision of god all this you see if you are sincerely seeking god your worldly life whatever you do unavoidably in the world will not affect your spiritual life the inner seeking must be real unavoidable Unavoidably, you may have to move with your family, with your children, with your parents, your friends, and all. Uh, but in and through all those activities, and during the activities, after the activities, when you are free, at all times, try to cultivate an inner awareness flowing. constantly like under water current of the divine so then no karma becomes karma no action of yours become karma you are always free from all limitations of karma see that this much happens in your life that you are free from the external karmic load and bondage so how do you enter in world in meditation is a little different from the normal course of meditation we usually when we sit for meditation we sit take rest we draw wait for some time uh, and then uh, somehow imagine a little and do something worship this that and come away no it is a conscious inward journey you are turning inward diving within and going to the core of your being be calm joyful two important features that mind must possess for meditation is prashantata tranquility the mind must be tranquil and it must be joyful and pleasant prasannata these are two important natures of mind that is expected so when you kiss it for meditation you eliminate all things for few minutes that you are going to meditate maybe 15 minutes half an hour don't bring anything to my your mind drop off close all the doors ear nose everything and be yourself alone privately with god no world should enter interfere no nothing should come from within also nothing should come from the outside hmm from outside you will be as it is you are sitting amidst people hmm huh? in daylight you are sitting with closed eyes somewhere it is sufficient people are talking around turn deaf ear to that be attentive to your inner voice inner thing hmm from inside out so see that the past memories future work the present things going on outside don't bother at 15 minutes kyuk totally to god or half an hour due to that totally exclusively for god so this is how we sit and then 
bring that image of the lord in the heart as if you are sitting so that the if you keep the object god is the object externally our away from you uh, it is subject of the subject you cannot make it an object object means there is always difference so i should not objectify god but subjectify god leave the place of ego i am the ego in this body the moment i step body somewhere i am continuing my existence in dream body or elsewhere in deep sleep so the ego is identifying with this body the ego has occupied the heart and says this is my kingdom i will do this i will enjoy that everything that like a king he is sitting in that ego is sitting now that place is given to god the ego is projected out it's god's palace i am i pushed the god outside and occupied it uh, that's why i suffer i undergo birth and death now leave that body neither body belongs to you nor the ego you are all is a imaginary thing going on stop that external uh, false play come to the reality may remove that ego from his seat and give that seat to god just like you are occupying this body and telling i will enjoy this i will enjoy that i will do this i let god do now be a his servant serving him there is no injustice in god so when you live to god and live in the same house as his servant you will never find anything suffering or bondage it is bliss and bliss alone ananda ananda because nothing can touch you nothing can harm you nothing can give you any kind of suffering you are your own master so here when we come into this picture we totally see that we are in a different world giving we have now just like a child is taken care by its mother because of its total dependence is being taken care by mother when we become the part of the house leaving that place to god to sit there and rule you have very bit is taken care like mother taking care takes care without any no suffering should touch my child nobody must harm it and it must find its own way of joy like that god gives us keeps us in a joyful peaceful state uh, the child is wants to play in water mother takes it to water the child wants to play with toys mother brings toys and gives whatever it wants it is giving getting all things for the child and like that whatever you need in your life external life in the world also you want to do business yes god will arrange and see that you are successful you see the mahabharata war how arjuna he says i will fight for you i am doing all this i have killed all these people be a nimitta alone and enjoy the glory of being a king yourself so god takes all the responsibility and god takes all the strain to see that you are happy you are whatever you want will be supplied given 
so you will not be deprived of anything. You want your parents to be happy, you will keep them happy. You want your children to be happy, you will keep happy. Because he, to make you happy, he brings all these toys and things and takes care of these toys. You will play and throw and go away. Your mother will gather all those toys and keep in a safe place. Like you are playing the world is taken care by the Lord. So you leave that only thing, you have to leave that place for God to occupy where ego was dominating now with all humility and move about in this world as a prince with all powers behind you, serving and loving people. So this is how we advance and then you will see meditation are spontaneous. And then when you sit for meditation, to leave that place for God, we ask you to see God in the same way that you are sitting. Just like Hanuman shows Sita and Rama sitting in his heart. Like that, uh, you keep your Ishtadevata facing in the same way and you come out and go inside in front of God. So, so that the place is given up to the Lord. Now, you are making God stand in front of you. When you, we try to meditate, God is, God is standing in front of you and you are meditating as the object. You are still occupying that place of the king inside. You may be doing God's service, name, everything, but yes, you have kept him outside as the object. Now, you have given your place, be making him subject of your subject. And then, you are the object in front of him. You are entering in. Somebody is coming to the bodily existence from outside as if. This is the citadel, it is the palace of God now. You are entering the palace of God afresh. This is what is again the Jeevanyasa we do in the worship. There we objectify God from the subject we bring out. Being subject of the subject we are bringing out. Now whatever we do, it is object. Once we do the Jeevanyasa in which the God is made, all his powers, all his, his powers are sub, ma maintaining the body also. Bodily existence also is covered by the Lord's power. My hands are moving by God's. Vang, Manas, Chakshutva, Prana, Grana, Prana, all these are occupied by God and managed by God. My eyes cease. Like Sri Ramakrishna seeing the world with love and compassion, no ragadvesha. My hands serve the people who are suffering, like Sri Ramakrishna. It blesses, it loves after the Jeevanyasa is done. So, here also in meditation, we are silently, we want God to occupy. God to manage and I enter the palace of God. He is sitting as the king of the kings there. So in meditation I see and behind the form stands his eternal unchanging reality. When Arjuna sees the Vishwarupa of uh, the Lord, Universe, Vishwa Rupa, Vishwa itself, universe as the whole universe, as the, the whole Brahmanda, as God, immanent aspect of God. God has become this form, like mind has become the dream world, the whole universe is, God has become the universe. 
His power has manifested this universe. Now, this, what did the Arjuna see? Where did he see the universal form? He saw, he saw the universal form, the whole universe as the Vishwa. Where did he see? In the absolute existence. Uh, he was terrified not seeing the creative aspect alone, the universe alone. Universe, the prior to the formation of universe or the formation, the creative process is a beautiful process. It is joy manifesting, love manifesting. But when once it is created, creation is over, it is moving towards destruction. Always you must remember the day the child is born or it has appeared in the womb, it is moving towards death. It is constantly moving towards death. We celebrate birthday with so pomp, but every moment from that moment he has come out, he is walking towards his own death. From whom to tomb. That is the journey he is taking. Now all beings are moving in that direction. So where is the transcendence? Uh, when we see, even Arjuna sees the creation, he doesn't see. It is moving towards death, everything is moving towards death, destruction. Uh, the creative and sustenance, sustenance is a process by which we are postponing the death. Uh, we are moving towards the death constantly. That's what frightens him. Not the creation is threatening. Movement of the creation toward destruction is what he sees. Mm. And the whole universe if destruction is moving towards destruction, there is behind Satchidananda. To that Satchidananda, he prays, O oh Lord, show your real form now. I am afraid. I am not able to tolerate. So when we do the worship also, we will similarly see the Satchidananda behind, the eternal unchanging. Now you show the Saumya Rupa. Now you show the cruel form of yours. Uh, now you show this. Now you show that. Whatever you show your forms is but an aspect behind which stands the unchanging eternal reality. So, Om Sri Ramakrishna Ayanama. Om is there behind Sri Ramakrishna that we meditate upon. So, Always be conscious of that, the behind, the, the one thing that is standing behind. Uh, when we meditate, so one thing is we see the God sitting in the same form within me and I am entering within. The whole thing is I am limiting myself with the bodily and trying to imagine Sri Ramakrishna, how big can I see him? The third point comes into picture. How big? This much, my heart, just itself is this much. Heart could be so much. Can I bring how to see that such a big picture? Here we start breaking the... Uh, uh, because mind and heart doesn't have space and time limitation. Mind also, I can bring a huge vehicle, whole universe into my mind. Uh, suppose I am designing a uh, 2000 feet height one mountain uh, or I am thinking of Mount Kailas or Mount Everest. 
uh, the whole picture I can bring to my mind because mind doesn't have limitation of space and time. I can imagine the whole road I can walk through up to Udupi. I can imagine the whole world. I can imagine so many things. So this doesn't have limitation. Mind doesn't have limitation. So similarly, my heart doesn't have limitation. Heart also. The moment I start traveling inward, inward journey, the moment I start taking the inward journey, the limitations break. I am entering into time beyond the time limits and space limits. Then how to think as if it is happening in the external world. Sri Ramakrishna is sitting, I have to go and give bath to him, give food to him. I will imagine in the same way as the whole thing is happening. In the same way, in what way it wants to happen. So I imagine uh, Sri Ramakrishna sitting there and this starts breaking down all the external limitations that are put by the space and time I am trying to enter. Just like I, I can imagine any size of person, uh, then I can think of anything. Similarly, the heart when you meditate, as if Sri Ramakrishna, you are moving about with all other people, you are also moving with Sri Ramakrishna. Physical, same way of form, same way of this, you touch and see the same softness, more softness than ours in his hands and feet. That much of clarity, that much of reality, that much of imagination, we develop in such a way that I feel so much comfortable. I can feel intimacy with God. I can see all things in a beautiful way that I want to have. So this relationship, how it matures, you see, into reality. Uh, so always think as if it is happening in the external world. Same way, Sri Ramakrishna is sitting, you are running to him uh, and bringing some food, water, bucket in the water, bathing him, don't limit him and the whole imagination to the bodily limit. We are accustomed to identify with body, break that limitation. Uh, the whole thing you are sitting calmly, forget the body. You start imagining and imagine it happening within your heart. Let the heart expand. So heart will expand, it will not limit your uh, uh, have image or imagination. Then slowly it matures into reality because it is images of the reality. It happens like that. Mm. Mm. Sometimes people imagine in actual practical happening in meditation. Actual, it is as if it is happening. Now imagine Thakur Mother and Swamiji, like in the temples we see, we see Thakur Mother and Swamiji sitting in the heart and you are entering. Now you forget the limitations, it is actually happening. You are imagining, you are going to Thakur Mother Swamiji, you are washing their feet, this, that and all, putting chandan and all that and everything is over, you are going down uh, and happily you are, and they are also happy to receive your services and you are going back. Now, just you will go and tell something in the ear of uh, uh, Swamiji. Swamiji looks at uh, Sri Ramakrishna and then Sharda Devi. They look at him, my going and telling. This is what happens in the family life. The children come and uh, do this, this kind of behavior. Then they go and then you know, the 
Holy Mother and Thakur are talking. He has told something about us, they are talking. As if it is happening, you see. It is a, not a part of the Leela Dhyana, but day-to-day -day life brought into the meditation. Then, uh, he has told something about us to Swamiji. Now, I start going looking at them and I go in front of them. Then Sir Thakur or Holy Mother will hold on my cloth. What did you tell? These things happen in the normal life. So, as we, just like a schoolboy or somebody is behaving there in front of Thakur, how much of reality it is giving to him. And slowly he starts associating every aspect of life with God. So he emerges the reality within. Slowly from the other side, consciousness starts manifesting. Chaitanya starts manifesting. And one day you see it has become, they have become real. Oh, they are more real than this world because you enter a higher level of consciousness of reality just through imagination, which is impossible to enter into. And that is how we enter into the real. So you are raising your, slowly raising your consciousness to the divine level from the worldly consciousness you are entering the divine consciousness, bringing purity of God, the love of God, compassion of God, the intimacy of God, the freedom with God, all these things you are bringing so that God manifests in his real aspect. Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu